Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. I don't know why I always have to do the intro, but... Because you're much better. Okay, if you guys haven't been listening, my grandma gives her opinions on my dating life and more generally on dating for millennials in 2021 and how it's different than back in her day. You know, usually I tell you about the date that I went on this week, um, but today I'm going to spare him and I'm going to talk about something that I did that was not supposed to be a date, to my knowledge. Um, but, you know, I thought it was just friends hanging out. A friend from high school, he came down to Palm Beach for the weekend and asked if we wanted to, you know, take a walk on the beach. Nothing against that at all, right? That's good. That's good. Um, and let me preface this as, like, we were good friends in high school. I think he probably had a crush always. Um, but I feel like I was always clear about purely just being friends. But this is where it gets confusing. In college, when we were both home for break, he was like, let's get dinner. Oh, I think as he got older, he wanted to get out of the friend zone. Exactly. So I feel like it's always been a concentrated effort from him to get out of the friend zone. I think the issue is we did kiss that night. Oh, and I know. Yeah, this is a mistake. Because that's the mistake. Because I think when you give a little window, then they're like, I can get out of the friend zone. It gives hope. You have to be... You have to stick to it. But I don't know. I guess I was like, you know what? I'll give it a try. I did not enjoy it. And I was like, never again. But we've kept in touch throughout the years. And I was like, we can still be friends. Um, so on this beach walk, let me get back to it the other day. Um, he was making multiple flirtatious comments. And I, I was very clear. I was like, oh, but we're great as friends. Friends. I drove that point home. He doesn't want to be friends. No. I mean, I was talking about seeing other people. Like, Thought he understood me. Um, we took a seat down on the beach for a few minutes and he literally went in for a kiss, no warning. And I had to completely dodge it, like literally. Like a seagull. Like a seagull. <laughs> like literally ducked my head under. Like, especially also during COVID, how do you not ask? No, I don't. I, I think this has got to, you, you got to cut this one off because. I'd never really, started. I didn't I think know, the string. He, he can't be a friend. He really wants to be more, and, and there's no sense in giving the poor guy uh, any kind of uh, hint of that, that he might be more. I agree. So I said that, and then he actually sent me, like, really mean text messages about, like, you know. Oh, grow up. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was super up. immature when I did nothing wrong, and I had to block him, and I've literally never had to block someone in my entire life. Is it possible to keep somebody in the friend zone when one of – them want more than to be friends no i i think that's a difficult thing i think uh men and women can definitely be friends but they can, once one deviates from the friendship mode then it doesn't work because uh it's just not balanced anymore uh because no it's possible to have guy friends Absolutely. of course and girlfriends vice versa Absolutely. um but when it's like when one person wants to be more than friends i feel like it's super awkward and it's always like for the wrong reasons like the friendship isn't genuine well, it's not that the friendship is genuine, it's that their thoughts and, and personality have changed towards you or towards their date or whatever it is, and then it no longer can be just friendship. And that's, that's sad, but that's what But how is. do you know if somebody is thinking that way? Because let's say, for example... Well, if they're leaning into you. Right, that's a pretty... No, <laughs> yeah. but I'm saying that's very obvious. What if it's like, you know, a friend, you go uh, for a meal and they're paying for your meals all the time... Because some, right. some guys just do that if they're going out with a girl, even if they're just a friend. So, like, what are some other ways you could tell if someone was trying to make it more? I don't know. You know something? Just going back on that, I, I'm much older than you are naturally. And I go out with uh, uh, women friends and I've gone out with a male friend as well when your grandfather is sort of busy or doesn't want to go. And uh, most men... If they're going out with a woman, do not want the woman to pick up the check. But how do you know if you're even in the friend zone? Or if it's well, like... Well, if somebody isn't holding your hand and, and walking and looking at the moonlight, then I think you're in the friend zone. If you're, lo if you're looking at the stars and... Th and no, and because not everyone is such a hopeless romantic where oh, it's that you obvious. Have be, you have to be a hopeless romantic. Everybody wants love and everybody wants romance. That's crazy. I, I agree with you. But I think a lot of people just aren't like that. Oh, I think they're they're just jaded then or they're not happy with life. But if you love life and you want to have a good time with someone and and you see something beautiful in a relationship, that's where it, it's all what it's all about. Okay, but then here's another question. Could you ever date 
you know, a friend's ex or someone that your friend dated? Or is that going against girl code? No, I don't think it's going against girl code as long as your friend has completely broken up with the fellow. Even if they were serious? Yeah, because if they've moved on and they're seeing other people and they i think you have to talk to your friend either way whether it be a, the male or the female talking to their partners and saying you know what i've always liked so and so as a friend he's asked me out uh, do you mind and if she so says, you're saying you have to ask permission well i think the first time i would i would run it past her if or text her or whatever however you guys do it today well if someone did that to me and was like by the way can i go out with your ex i would be like sure but you're dead to me and i'll never speak to you well, again but have a right. nice time but that's not right because no that's time. messed up like there's so many fish in the sea why do you have to go after your your good friend's ex well you're not going after them you know each other and you might like each other. So then what, you liked each other the whole time we were dating? Why were you with me then? No, no. I think, but but you've already moved on from that relationship. So. I don't think it matters. I think girl code is girl code. I mean, okay, how do you define girl code? Did it did it not exist when you were No, it younger? really didn't exist because, I mean, we wouldn't go out with each other's uh, boyfriends. Uh, so what was it, like every man for themselves? No. But if somebody had broken up and you all knew each other, you were all in the same crowd or you all went to the same high school or you went to the same uh, college and somebody was no longer dating a friend and they asked you out, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think girl code also is two things, right? It's both, you know, not dating a guy that your friend used to date and also it's telling a girl things about their guy like if they know that their boyfriend is being sketchy or cheating going to the girl and not going to the guy like that's girl code well i don't think you should do that at all like intervene you mean i don't think it's any of your business it's for the girl to find out what what the relationship is and what this guy no but if you found out information and your friend is oblivious to it well i i'm not so sure you should be involved in that that's that's up to the friend to find out unless he's murdered somebody and 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 blood is dripping no i think you have to tell your friend if you know her boyfriend is cheating on her well how do you know they're really cheating you weren't in the room they could be just going out for a drink and talking about but i think if you know any sort of evidence or information the girl has a right to know well she might have the right to know but i think that'll be the end of your friendship too Oh, you mean it could mess up your relationship with them? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I think sometimes people what they don't know won't hurt them. Also, okay, what if a friend of yours was interested in a guy but they never dated and then he's now interested in you? Can you go out go with them? For it. Absolutely. What is this now? You're going to not be able to go out with anybody soon. Right, cuz you can't claim people just cuz like you're like, "Oh, I find that person attractive, no one else in the world can now go out with him." Exactly. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's like, do you think a man who's walking into a bar and he sees two girls at the same time is going to care if he met one a week later? Who he's going to ask out first? I it's mean, not that the ridiculous. guy cares. It's more just like, is it a rude thing to your friend? It's not rude. It's not rude. you got to get on with it. I say I'm a girl's girl. Chicks before dicks. No, Kimberly, don't say that. That's what people say. Like, they say bros before hoes. I think. You've never heard that before? No, I've never heard Guys of that. Guys are always like, bros before hoes. I've never heard of this. Who talks like this? You have to be a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> so I actually um, got a question this week that sort of related to this. This girl is wondering if her friends broke girl code by, I'll tell you the story. So her two girlfriends, she's, she's in college, her two girlfriends at school were supposed to come back with her to her hometown for like a three-day weekend, get their hair done, all of that. Um, and they both came up excuses that they couldn't come for the weekend and she didn't really think anything of it. Then she found out that they were going on a group weekend trip somewhere with a bunch of, of their guy friends, including this girl's recent ex-boyfriend. This is sounding very tricky. Yeah. She says that her ex-boyfriend's been harassing her since the breakup, like won't stop reaching out to her. And that they, her friends lied about the whole thing while she went home alone. Like she went home for the weekend, I guess, by herself. And everyone else went on the trip that she wasn't invited for to like her friends, her ex. 
and they have not apologized and she said they've been back at school for a week now and they've come up with an excuse like not to see her like they have exams etc and have not apologized well, and she, i think these girls are basically not her friends correct i think that's the first thing so uh whether they should have told her you know uh that they were going on this trip with her ex and that they thought it would be uncomfortable for her to come along yeah probably yes but on the other hand if they were really good friends of hers and they knew there was uh, a friction going on they shouldn't have gone either it's not that important uh to do that so i think she just should not value them as really true friends right i think they 100 percent broke the girl code they but it's every code. they broke yeah they broke the rule book right, the, there, is they, no rule just, there is no rule book there is no rule book they were just being just as uh, opportunists for mm-hmm. themselves. And uh, and it sounds like they just really don't care about her as a friend. Correct. Like I, I would tell her to move on. It's obviously upsetting to go through like friend breakups. I almost think they're just as bad as real breakups oh, sometimes. You, you think real breakups are worse? Yes. Yes. Yeah, because like I guess you have the heartbreak. The other one's kind of just like sad and like I guess you no longer have that person in your life. But like breakups with a significant other are like – serious they're sad. Sad. They're sad depression even if, even if, well i don't think you should get depressed the, I mean, I well i mean you see i go that. i get depressed with people who aren't even my boyfriends after we break up well, I, I go through breakups a lot with people who don't even know that they're my boyfriend <laughs> this is not good this is this is you got to get a life there like let's talk about the ways to get over a breakup like okay because now i feel that it's very different than it was in your day because of social media you can't really shake somebody unless you're like blocking them and all of these other things I mean I believe in the theory that you cannot get over someone until you're into somebody else do you well I think uh you might never get over somebody if you were truly in love um and some either you broke up for whatever reasons whether it be uh that uh, in those days whether your parents didn't like the person or whether you were uh, moving to a different city but for uh, for jobs or whatever whatever the instance was I think sometimes you never got over it and you always thought about them but I think as time goes on it becomes less and less and time usually, is a big one correct and I, and usually someone then comes to fill the void yeah I just think there always is a void like as much as I preach self-love and that it's enough I personally feel that like there is a little empty space that's you're constantly looking to fill a lot of people also say that like it's not even when you like somebody else it's like if you hook up with somebody else you know if you have sex with someone else if you make out with someone else that could work too well that might work for some people that wouldn't have worked for me right I don't know I I don't I don't think sex really is the is the ingredient I think it's more emotional right I think it's really to sit down and and say to somebody you know what? We're really good together. I, I enjoy your company. The sex, of course, has got to be there and all the other things that go along with that. But I think it's more of just being comfortable with somebody and really liking them. Yeah. And I, I think like... When and a it, little tingle. It's very nice to have a little tingle in your relationship. It's explain. Got, well, I think it has to be like a little bit of an edgy kind of thing. You have to say... Uh, he's cute or I'm you know am I turning him on or you know little things like that uh, do matter in a relationship I like that tingle like because it's the same thing as butterflies or being nervous around somebody butterflies are well yeah that's that's butterflies is what most people would use to describe it but I kind of like tingle (laughs) in our case here okay um I think the tingle is not as easy to find as you may think. Well, of course not. That's why that's why most relationships don't work. You have to find the sa- the right ingredients. I'm having great ideas for our merchandise, like like sweatshirts that say the tingle, or like maybe <laughs> underwear that say the tingle. I think that might be pushing. It. <laughs> um, but let's talk about like getting over a breakup because I feel that I have like step by step. I think first you have to allow yourself time to be sad for. A week or two. Minimum. Maybe even two weeks. Let's say two weeks. Two weeks. weeks, By two weeks, otherwise you need to go to a shrink. Or (laughs) let's, let's, do you think every single episode you recommend going to a shrink? Since I've never gone, (laughs) I'm going to recommend it. It must be good to look at all the people who are doing it. But two weeks is uh, two weeks is enough. Enough crying, enough. uh, Well, right. uh, You just can't feel bad. I mean, I trust me. I extend that two weeks 
for sure. But I think you just can't feel bad for somebody after that for a certain point. Like when my friends are going on and on, it's like, all right, I don't want to be around you anymore. If That's it's correct. That's so correct. you have to, I think it's okay for two weeks. Then you can't, you can do it still, but you can't expect sympathy. Right. Sympathy is finished after two weeks. That should be a rule. Okay. Then, oh, muting them on social media actually I think would be my number one. Well, I don't know how to work social media, so that's out for me. Thank you. Like, God imagine though, like, I open, so it's like a habit. You see me, I just pick up my phone, like, I open Instagram. That's the first thing I do. Imagine seeing that person's face literally every time you pick up your phone, like, if they're posting or like having the ability to go and look well, at can pictures. Can you block of- them? Well, they would, they would know if you blocked them. Well, so what? I think that's petty. Oh. Well, why would you want to know what they're doing after you've broken up? It's like, because you don't hate them. No, you don't hate them. And then them everyone more. else looks and they're like, oh, they don't follow each other anymore on social media. Well, who cares what anybody else thinks? You're not, you shouldn't really follow each other once it's over. Really? Well, you think I wouldn't. unfollow? Unfollow, stop looking at their pictures, don't look at who they're going out with. That just causes put salt on the wound I don't uh, that I don't but that's why I say like you can mute them so they're just like not showing up on your news feed but like you're still friends with them all right okay but I don't I mean um, some people might say unfollow is the right thing to do I just think that's making a mountain out of a molehill I don't think so I think if you if if you were sad for two weeks then you should stop looking at their pictures okay then I would say this is what like a healthy person would say and do I don't know if I fit the bill I would say like you know fill the void and like do self care, right? Like see friends, um, work well, you out, say, exactly. Surround right. yourself with like family. Focus on your job. Well, that's part that of the person. healing process. Yes. Yeah, I think that's absolutely correct. Okay. Next. Um, oh, I found this very helpful to make a list of things that like you did not like about the relationship, and like what you would want in your next one now. So like a note on your phone that you can look back at whenever you're thinking about all those good times. Um, like you know then you remind yourself oh yeah they weren't nice to my family or whatever it was i i I think this is too much not everyone can just pick up their lives and go like i have friends who are still upset about relationship that ended long time ago like it's not easy for people it's not easy but it doesn't help to make lists and to and to dwell on what the faults were or the successes of a past relationship if it's in the past if it's going to come back and you think you're on a um, hiatus or a, a, a break, like they used to say in Friends, uh, then that's different. But if it's over, you've got to say it's over. So you would never get back with an ex or recommend getting back with an ex? I don't think I would recommend it unless there was a complete um, tra- uh, change in whatever was bothering you right. in the first place. Because if it didn't the work the up. first time, why would it work the Correct. second time? Very rarely does it ever work when somebody comes back. But it could have been for many different reasons. It could be, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, just the fact that he didn't wear blue shoes, he wore brown shoes, and you could get over it this time. But if it's really something serious that caused the breakup, nine times out of ten, no one changes. And and you just have to move on to the next person. But sometimes what happens, like, is you want to know you, what um, to take away from it, like what you learned from it. That question actually comes up a lot on dates that I go on. Like, oh, what did you, like, learn from your last relationship? I feel like every date always asks that. I think I think everybody today seems to be de- dwelling too much in the psychological and not enough in just enjoying Which is interesting because you were the time of, like, Freud. No, I was no. Oh. Ford was a little before me. Thank I thought you. that was the fifties. Well, no, he was in the forties, but I wasn't. We didn't. We didn't dwell on psychology like you guys do today. I mean, in the fifties and sixties, it was more about dancing to music and listening to the platters. So much easier. It was much easier. Dating was much easier. Of course, we all got divorced very quickly. But you're never going to get into a relationship if you can't understand someone's past traumas, because like. Who it, cares? That's a past trauma. No, with because else. like it can help you navigate why they act a certain way now. You know what? Then nobody's ever going to have a relationship because everybody has past traumas and everybody has. I'm not saying you, you. I'm not saying don't go out with somebody because they have past traumas. I'm saying understand what they are, why they act a certain way, and then you will know how to respond because you'll understand them on that level, and then it's just like better success down the line. You Versus might, like I don't know why they never do this. No, 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 no. I don't know. 
it's worth the effort. It's too much. This is too hard a work to do. I, I, I don't think this is really what I would ever want to do in a relationship now. I don't think it's much fun. I don't really want to analyze anybody on a date. I wanted to go to a movie and have some popcorn. Right, like act, live in the moment yes. and like just do fun things together. Fun things together and then build a relationship together. Hmm, this is a this is a new premise. I've never having well, I think fun. You should try it. Having fun, fun on a date. Wait, so you said something before about taking a break versus a breakup. Right. Is it bullshit? Like, should you just break up? If you're thinking about taking a break? I think if you're taking a break, it usually means that the relationship is over and you're being nice. Uh, right, like it hurts too much to exactly. just be like hard and stop. you don't want to hurt the other person. Mm-hmm. You do still like them, but you don't want to be in a relationship anymore. Mm-hmm. But people take breaks perhaps for uh, and, and do personal um development go they might want to change jobs and go to a different area and it's no longer conducive to be in that relationship but then again come back six months or a year from now and call up the the person and find out well you know what I really would like to start seeing you again if you would like to so I think it depends on the uh the individuals but in most cases somebody who's taking a break it means goodbye and also if you're having these kind of problems it's like oh I know some couples who have done couples therapy but like before marriage at that point I would just be like why even get rid of them yeah you have so (laughs) much like after marriage I totally understand going to couples therapy well if you have an issue rather than to break off a marriage right perhaps with uh, children children or even if it's not children just emotional togetherness you, you want to work some problems out fine but if you have to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist before you get married dump them Yeah, someone was telling me about this app called The Lasting App. It's like the number one marriage counseling app. And it's five sessions on your phone that like cover the basics of relationship health. And you can access like all these conversation techniques and reminders and sessions, uh, I think for free, or I don't know if you have to pay for a certain amount of it. But it's funny that like there's apps now to do this kind of thing. I think there are apps to do everything. Yeah, true. (laughs) I think it it seems to be you can do anything on an app. But you know what? I I think all these things are good. They're good tools to Mm -hmm. help. But if if there's nothing there in a relationship that that really is still um, your original thoughts about the other person, if you no longer have feelings or tingles or whatever, Mm -hmm. it has to be over. I think like you do a tingle check. Like how you... Tingle check. Could this be good? You go to the doctor every month. Like, this is like a self-checkup. Do I Did I have the tingles this month? <laughs> did I get my tingle shot? <laughs> That's very good. It's probably easier than getting your COVID. <laughs> probably. Okay, we got lots of questions this week, Grandma. Oh, good. Let's hear. Okay. Um, someone DM'd me and wanted to know your thoughts. Oh, wait a minute. What's DM? Take a guess. I don't know. It's on Instagram. It's... So the your mother? <laughs> no, it's a direct message. Oh, okay. So like no one else saw it. They just sent it to me. Okay. So remember I talked to you about sliding into the DMs? <laughs> it's when like a guy or a girl um, directs message somebody to like see what's up. Oh, okay. Slide into the DMs. All right, okay. That's how I go on most of my dates. Oh, this is so sad. I know, it's so depressing. Okay. So anyway, someone slid into my DMs. I wanted to know the thoughts on living with somebody before marriage. Well, I think now, for sure, I would live with somebody before marriage. And my when I uh, got married, we would never have thought of that. That was very, very unusual. It was like taboo. Like people would be well, like, was, she's... Uh, yeah, because she was supposedly... Uh, yeah, we just never... Uh, some couples did, but it was very rare. Usually you... you, uh, if you were but going, wouldn't you want to give it a try, see if living together works? Because a lot of the times you're like, oh, I actually hate this person. And then no harm, no foul. Well, I don't know. I think that's... I Then I think you rushed into the relationship to begin with. I think by the time you decide to get married, you should live together in, today for a couple of months or whatever it be for six... Just because a lot of people who um, have such different living habits right. that, you know, you have to know, does he like to sleep late? Does he like to get up early in the morning? Does he sleep on the left side? Does he sleep on the right side? Not that those are deal breakers, uh, but... They're not deal breakers, but it makes for a happier marriage if you can do things at somewhat the same pace. Uh, if somebody says they have to go uh, to... Uh, 
Starbucks at eight o'clock in the morning to get that first cup of coffee and they can't sit down and have a read the paper at home that could be annoying I mean that right. could be really an issue so like if I said I am getting engaged and I had never lived with this person before would you be like maybe wait on the engagement before no I would say get engaged and now move in for a couple of months and then get married okay but don't drag so, it out for a year because by that time you wait isn't talk. a year a normal time for an engagement well, I don't know. I was only engaged six, eight weeks. Wait, I before got you got, before the wedding? Yep. How'd you even plan a good wedding in eight weeks? Oh, my wedding was beautiful. We could plan it. <laughs> but I feel like you have to secure your well, location. Well, I, cra- I wasn't crazy like these br- bridezillas now. Ugh, I'm going to be so crazy. Well, that's terrible. I didn't really care. Whatever my mother said was perfect. Oh, my God. That's not... I was still in college. I just right. got... Yeah, I, I don't think it mattered to me. All I wanted to do was wear a pretty dress. Right. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to have a lot more requests than that, but right. next question. Does zodiac compatibility matter? I'm a Cancer and interested in an Aries. The charts don't look good for us. Is there even a point in pursuing him? I have no idea cuz I'm married to a Taurus and my first child was a Taurus and I and I'm a Taurus and it's supposed to be disastrous. Oh yeah. Wait, have you ever looked up Taurus Taurus? We're all stubborn. No, but like the compatibility between two of them. I don't think I'm breaking up over my compatibility. You know, it's 57 years I've invested too much. I into Google, this. I mean, not, yeah, I like ask a date their birthday to get their horoscope every single time. And if I never would not go out with somebody because of it, but if it's a good one, like a good compatibility, it always sticks in my head. And I think I give it a little bit more of a try. I don't know. I never thought about it. But, but uh, if it works, it works. I don't know who do, who comes up with those uh, compatibility things. It's like in the stars. Well, what star? Astrologists. Oh, well, they're making it up. They don't know what star is working together. Oh wait, I think Taurus Taurus has very good compatibility. Oh, it does. All right, yeah. Thank heavens. Um. Yeah, it's actually really high in like a lot of things. It says. Um, when two Taurus partners come together, the world ceases to exist as they both knew it before. Um. They oh, perfectly d- understand each other. Well, that's good. See, this is the right kind of thing. Well, Kim, I think to sum this uh, episode up, I think that we came to a couple of conclusions. What is it? Well, I don't know. This I'm just going to go for this as a as a uh, as a first one. Do not go out with a friend's ex boyfriend. Uh, e- even if she says you can, she's going to hate you anyway. So don't do it. Oh, so these are like the things that you've learned from this episode. Because that was not your opinion when we started. I know, it's still not my opinion, but I have a feeling in today's world, they can't cope. Okay. So don't don't go out with anybody that... Because everyone's so sensitive. Exactly. And they're going to immediately go to the psychiatrist. Yes. That's like, I feel like we've also learned that from podcasting is like, if in doubt, go to the psychiatrist. <laughs> I think what's going to happen is you're going to have to go back and change your English major to a psychology major for these podcasts. Second thing is there is no such thing as a break. A breakup and a break are the same thing. So it's just, just a way to lessen it. the blow. Exactly. Just get over it and tell your friends, I'm single again, fix me up. And then what did we learn about friend zone whether or not we can escape it or if you're in the friend zone it's you're forever in the friend zone oh that's a tricky situation i think if you're in the friend zone you have to stay in the friend zone it really doesn't work uh to uh switch switch lanes midstream unless the other person gives indication that they also don't want to be in the friend zone anymore it's getting too complicated. Yeah, it's just, this is honestly, girl meets boy, they fall in love. Let's just stick with that. It's too, all of this other stuff is too confusing. I agree. Or, sorry, or boy meets boy or girl meets girl. Correct. Another great week. We have a lot of guests coming up, so that's why we wanted to do a little solo ep this week. So I'm excited to show all of you that. You know the drill. Um, email us, excuse my grandma at gmail.com, any of your questions, or slide into the DMs. <laughs> Very good, Kim. <laughs> at excuse my grandma on Instagram um, or into my personal at Kim Merstein, K-I-M-M-U-R-S-T-E-I-N. Go to our website, excuse my grandma podcast.com to subscribe to our newsletter where we let you guys know about all our new episodes and anything else coming out with the pod. So grandma, do you want to end on um, your favorite line? Okay, Kim. Just everybody remember it's free. And if you don't like it, just turn us off. Exactly. Okay, everyone. Have a good week. 